Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us five steps in order to execute any plan. The five step prophetic plan. So anytime we have something we need to do, go back to this hadith. This hadith lays out for us in five steps what should be our methodology, our management, our modus operandi, how do we operate? Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to us in a hadith narrated in Sahih Muslim by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. And each of these phrases is beautiful. First phrase, it begins, Al-Mu'minu Al-Qawiyyu Ahabbu ila Allahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if wa fi kullin khayr. The skilled believer, the powerful believer, the believer who knows something, is armed, is equipped with anything, is better than the believer who does not have those skills. And both of them are good. This is the first point. We need to acquire strength, skills. Al-Mu'minu al qawi the stronger believer. Stronger in what? In anything. Stronger in physical strength. Stronger in Iman. Stronger in management. Stronger in computer programming. Stronger in the knowledge of medicine. Whatever is your field, aim to be the best. The better believer is the one who knows his field better. Al Mu'min al Qawi. The stronger believer. Our scholars say, stronger here in any aspect. If you know something, if you're better at a skill, if you have stronger Iman, it is better than the one who doesn't in that field. So gain strengths in your field. This means skills, education, experience. That is Al Mu'min al Qawi. And there's good in all believers. There's good in all the believers. Whether you have that skill or not, you have Iman, you have good in you. So that's the first point. Acquire skills. Be the better believer. The second point. Aim to do something that will benefit you. Once you have skills, you don't just sit back. Set some strategic goals, have a vision, have a plan. Don't live a lazy life. Don't live a visionless life. We have one life to live. Aspire to make the most of your life. Have the highest dreams, have the loftiest of all visions. Do something useful with your life. This is what we're being told. We're being told, be eager to do something that is beneficial. It is beneficial to have Iman and good deeds, be eager to have them. It is beneficial to have a job, acquire a job. It is beneficial to save money, save money. It is beneficial to have a loving family, have a loving family. You have to have desires, aims, goals. You have to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, nothing is going to get done. So the second point, have that vision. What do you want from life? What do you want to accomplish? What is your goal? And you should have multiple goals. My goal in the religious field is such and such. My goal in the economic field is such and such. My goal in my corporation is such and such. My goal for my family life is such and such. In every field, have a vision, have a plan, have a goal. Number two. Number three, wasta'in billah. First and foremost, after you have the vision, before you do anything, seek help from Allah. Before you do anything, you have the vision in your mind. It's in your head. You have it in your goal. What should you do? Raise your hands to Allah and make dua. Ista'in billah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Raise your hands to Allah. Make dua. Ask Allah. Beg Allah. Tahajjud dua. Dhikr sadaqa. Ista'in billah. Seek the help of Allah. Our scholars say, you seek the help first and foremost by praying istikhara for that vision and goal. Pray istikhara. Oh Allah, is this vision good for you, me? I want to be the CEO of my own company. That's my vision. Pray istikhara. Oh Allah, if it's best for me to be the CEO of my company, make can happen for me. Then make dua to Allah. Always make dua to Allah. Then make it blessed. Make it easy for you. Allow this door to open up. Ista'in billah. That is point number three. Number four. Wala ta'jaz. Don't give up. Subhanallah. What a beautiful, beautiful motivation. Don't just throw in the towel. 
don't be lazy don't just expect miracles to happen without you doing anything no once you have the skills once you have the vision you've prayed istikhar and made dua to allah now you need to put in the sweat and the tears you need to put in the physical effort you need to put in plan a doesn't work move on to plan b doesn't work move on to plan c never give up wala ta'jaz don't lose hope keep on doing it and then doing it and then doing it keep on trying don't give up hope and then suppose you don't get to that goal or suppose something else happens or suppose some type of mini misfortune happens along the way our prophet has the advice for us which is the backup plan for your psychology the backup plan for how you view the world if something else happens you wanted to open your company guess what it didn't happen and you continued in your job you didn't open your company you tried you tried you tried whatever it didn't work out and khalas the door is permanently closed not because of you sometimes it's beyond your control okay it's closed now so our prophet said if something else happens then don't go back and rethink oh maybe if i did this maybe if i did that fain asabaka shay don't say to yourself don't go back in your mind and relive your failures and then think what if and how about and maybe no it's happened it was the past so therefore do not open up in one hadith in one version he said thinking about what if opens the door for shaitan shaitan creates doubts in your mind instead say this I tried it didn't work out. Allah's qadr was effective, and whatever Allah wants to happen will happen. Qadr Allahu wa ma sha'afal. Don't go back and relive your failures. Don't let your failures bog you down. Don't go into a type of cycle of depression or of going back in time. No, it was an opportunity. You thought it was good. You did everything right, but Allah had a better plan for you. So, khalas, that door is closed. Move on to the next chapter in your life. Learn from your mistakes. Don't blame anyone don't go back khalas it happened it was Allah's qadr and whatever Allah wants to happen it is going to happen qadr is never used to justify your future actions it is used to console your past tragedies memorize this line qadr is never used to justify a future course don't say oh it's Allah's qadr that I don't, I don't have a company no you don't know what is your future you don't know what is Allah's qadr try to open your company try to be successful try but then qadr can be used for the past oh I tried it didn't work qadr Allahu ma sha fa'al I move on to something else never justify a future decision based upon qadr that is a misuse and an abuse of qadr rather qadr can be used to console yourself for a tragedy of yesterday, for a calamity of a few years ago. You can say, oh, Qaddar Allah, that accident happened. I lost money in the stocks, such and such. Qaddar Allah wa ma fa'al. Okay, that's in the past. As for the future, you do not know Allah's Qadr. So expect the best from Allah's Qadr and strive to get the best Qadr. And inshallah ta'ala, whichever path you go, it will be for your best Qadr. Even if you don't arrive at the qadr you wanted Allah's qadr for you will be better than your vision of your qadr for yourself what Allah has chosen for you is better than what you have chosen for yourself but you need to trust Allah and you need to have the positive thoughts of Allah so you put in the effort you have that high vision and whichever path you find yourself in and wherever you end up it will be Allah's qadr that is better for you and you only ended up there because you had positive thoughts of Allah and positive thoughts of Qadr. This is the simple five-step plan. It is the foolproof methodology for our lives, for every aspect, for every facet, for every single arena. Follow these simple five steps.